Gents, have you seen these crazy suits that Jordan Peterson's wearing nowadays? So I was watching his interview with Joe Rogan the other day, and I couldn't take my eyes off the suit he was wearing. Now, from one side, at first glance, it looks normal. But if you look at it straight on, you notice he's using two different fabrics on each side of the suit. And then when he opens up the jacket, you see it's got this really interesting lining that you just know has a story. So I ended up doing some research and found out that he actually had 12 custom suits made, each in a very different style that told the story of his book, The 12 Rules for Life. Now, in the case that you haven't read it, I highly recommend Solid Book. I actually really like the audiobook because he read it. That being said, it's not the easiest read. In fact, I think you've got to go through it a couple times to really try to understand all the concepts he's trying to cover, which is why when I found out he had these 12 custom suits made for his 12 rules of life, I knew as a former custom clothier that's designed thousands of suits and a Jordan Peterson fan, I feel I have a unique expertise to go through and critique each of the designs. So the first suit that we're going to critique is rule number one, stand up straight with your shoulders back. Now, first up, this one isn't actually a suit. It's only a jacket, an odd jacket, as they're historically called. In any case, the sports jacket we're looking at here is going to have structure in the shoulders. It's going to look very classic in design. Got a burgundy pattern fabric with this interesting blue window pane. Now, I was reading that they used bamboo fabric for this jacket. That means it's going to be a little bit stiffer. And as many of you guys know, the word bamboo is synonymous with standing tall. Now, if you didn't know that about the fabric and just looking at it from the outside, the jacket looks relatively simple. But when you open up the jacket, you see it's got a very unique lining with a lobster and a human being. Now, if you've read the book, you understand the symbolism of the lobster. And really quick, for those of you guys that haven't, he uses lobsters as an example in the book of how important it is, especially in the animal kingdom when it comes to status, so that people send messages to each other without having to fight needlessly. Lobsters fight over territory and like many other animals, they don't want to actually have to fight because they could damage each other. And instead, they rely on the interaction, size differences, and for everyone to figure out very quickly where their place is on the status hierarchy. The lesson here, walk tall, quit drooping, dare to be dangerous. Encourage the serotonin to flow so that you can have an easier life. Now, back to the jacket. Another small detail that I like on the back of the collar, they've got the rule back there again as well. Overall, my thoughts on this jacket, it's a solid build. I love sports jackets. You can wear them with jeans, you can wear them with chinos, a wide variety of different pants. This jacket is going to be actually really easy to match. And for a lot of situations, you don't need a full-on suit. A sports jacket like this would come in really handy, really a nice overall design. And I love the fact that they went with a bamboo fabric. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, how does my style measure up? What actions do I need to take? If you're a man that wants to take action, you're tired of watching all of these videos and not actually following through, going through and buying the clothing, revamping your wardrobe, improving your image, then you need to check out our course, The Style System. Over the last decade, this has been the internet's go-to professional men's style course in which we teach you exactly what you need to know. The goal of The Style System is to give you the information you need to take action so that you can become your best dressed self. Check out the course. It's all about action. It's about you taking the steps to become the man you know yourself to be. Suit number two, treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. Now, this suit is easily one of the flashiest on this list. First up, it's double-breasted. From what I can see, they went with four buttons on the front. Jordan Peterson isn't the tallest guy, so this makes a lot of sense. If you were like six foot four, I would recommend going with a six-button front. Now, from the design, I saw they went with a notch lapel, which I feel is a mistake. They should have gone with peak lapels because, as many of you guys know, a double-breasted jacket is going to be more formal. But there are so many other things I love about this jacket that I'm going to look past that. In particular, let's talk about the obvious one, the two different fabrics that are used for the construction of the jacket. So, looking at the jacket, the right side, the dominant side, is going to be in a dark navy blue. Using a classic worsted wool, when we open up the jacket, we're also going to see that the lining in there is going to be a lighter blue, reminiscent of heaven. Now, the left side of the jacket is going to be in the color burgundy. And this is really interesting. They actually went with a mohair. So, again, paying attention to those small details. And mohair, by the way, is very soft, very comfortable, a very much a luxury fabric, even compared to wool. And of course, the inside of the lining is going to work with that side of the jacket. You have the flames of hell. Now, interestingly, they decided just to go with one color on the trousers, which I think is a smart move. It makes the jacket stand out even more. And a small detail, but important. Notice the 
the pockets are jetted, meaning there's no flap. And that's where this jacket again is screaming. It's more formal. Now, like all the jackets on this list, when you flip up the back collar, you're going to be able to see the name of the jacket right there. And now let's talk about the symbolism. So if you've read the book, if you've watched Jordan's videos, you're familiar that he believes in heaven and hell, but not necessarily in the way that biblically a lot of us are taught to believe. He talks about just simply it's real in the sense that so many people right here on this earth find themselves living a life that is basically hell incarnate or is closer to heaven and that it's the flames of hell knowing that we don't want to go there is a stronger motivator for most people when it comes to living their lives straight and avoiding falling into temptation now me personally what i love about this jacket besides the creativity is the small attention to detail not only the mohair but notice how the blue is the dominant side it actually covers the hell and again, this symbolism pops up whenever the jacket is buttoned. You notice the top two buttons are blue, the bottom two are red. Again, heaven above hell. Now, practically speaking, anytime you have a lot of fun with a custom piece like this, it becomes more difficult to wear because everyone's going to remember it. Next up, suit number three, make friends with people who want the best for you. Now, at first glance, a lot of you guys may think this is a white suit. It's not. It's the color top. Having designed like 2000 suits, I can think of two times in which I designed and made a top suit. It's an interesting choice because practically speaking, how often do you wear a light colored suit? They just get dirty. So for most men, they're going to stay away from it. On the other hand, if you're a speaker, if you're in a room with a hundred people and you want to stand out, going with a suit of this color, you are going to be able to do that. Now, the design of the suit is pretty simple. Again, we're going with notch lapels, but notice the pockets. They're going with patch pockets. Therefore, this suit, not only because of the color, but this is a very casual suit. In any case, let's look at that lining. What do we have here? We have the death of Julius Caesar, which is very fitting to the name of the suit and the chapter from the book, because let's face it, Julius Caesar's, his friends, at least on one particular day in the Senate, did not have his best interests in mind whenever they stabbed him to death. Overall, for me, this suit, I like it in theory, but practicality, hopefully Jordan's getting some wear out of it, but I would think for most people, this is just going to be one that they don't get much wear out of. Next up, suit number four. Or compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who somebody is today. Now, this suit is really interesting because first up, it's a three-piece suit. So, he went with the additional vest, which if you decide to take the jacket off, you've still got the vest, which is going to keep the outfit together. So, if he's lecturing, if he's talking, he gets warm, he can actually peel off that jacket. A dressy, still very good-looking outfit. On top of that, he went with the color brown, which works for Jordan's complexion and his hair, although he's graying more. So, he's going to want to probably go towards lighter shades. I think a medium brown probably would have worked a little bit better. But in any case, and what was shark skin? And shark skin, obviously, it's not real shark skin. Shark, that refers to the weave of the fabric. This is one that is not going to have a sheen to it. It's going to have a little bit of whiteness, a little bit of roughness overall in the look. And from the outside, this outfit right here, if he were to walk across a college campus, this is what you can imagine a professor looking like. Now, the jacket lining is interesting. Of all the jacket linings, this is the one I understood least in terms of being able to identify some of these features figures. Perhaps you guys out there in the audience, you identify somebody you want to let me know down in the comments below. But with the vest, that's where they had a lot of fun. And in fact, if you look at the back of the vest, we see a gorilla holding a basketball. Now, I really like how they brought in this image and the whole story behind it. In case you don't know, this is one of the experiments that Jordan talks about how people think that they're really smart, that they notice things, but how we can become so fixated on something that we miss a gorilla walking in front of us because we're paying attention to the basketballs, which probably makes no sense to some of you guys, but go ahead and after this video, go Google Jordan Peterson, Gorilla basketball and you'll find the video and it will all make sense. Overall, this suit to me came off as a workhorse suit. Makes a lot of sense. Something you could wear day in, day out. Isn't going to grab a whole lot of attention. He could choose to wear it without the vest. But yeah, overall, a solid build. Next up, we've got suit number five. Rule number five, do not let your children do anything that would make you dislike them. Now, when I saw the design here, this was labeled as a three-piece black suit. To me, that screams black tie. Well, you know, in the picture I saw, it was hypothetical. I haven't seen him actually wear this outfit. 
I would think that this is something he would wear in a black tie situation. So he'd want to wear, you know, they call for a tuxedo. This is when you're going to wear literally that black bow tie. In any case, with the jacket, when I looked further at the style, I could tell you, yeah, this is black tie because they went with peak lapels. Peak lapels are going to be the most formal of all the lapels. Although you could argue shawl lapel is just as formal. I also noted on this jacket, they wanted to keep it really simple, really clean. So there are no pockets on the front, which is something actually I rarely see on jackets. I don't think it's bad. I think actually it's really good, but uh, just a small detail to note. Now it's a three piece suit, which if you know your black tie terminology, all black tie in general should be a three piece suit unless you go with a cummerbund. He doesn't have a cummerbund here, which actually has a history in India. I'm not going to get into, but the vest is proper here because it's supposed to cover up the place where the shirt meets the trousers. Believe it or not, a hundred years ago, that was viewed as something that is unsightly, should not be seen. So it was always covered by a piece of fabric. Now the lining here is interesting. We've got two stories. We have the story of Pinocchio and the story of Peter Pan. If you're a Disney fan, you understand that both of these characters are flawed. Pinocchio, obviously, he lies. He gets tries to get himself out of situations by making things up. Now, Peter Pan, on the other hand, it's a little bit more nebulous because they don't really talk about it in Disney films. But if you know Jordan Peterson and his work, he talks about the issue, the problem here of so many boys who are 35 year old men, but don't want to grow up. And I personally agree with him that this is a big problem because if you don't grow up, how are you going to be able to have a relationship with a real woman and form a stable family. Or if you don't want a family, you just want to be single, how are you going to be able to grow and contribute to society if you've got all the narcissist, all the things that are associated with being a child? A lot to unpack in here. I'm not going to ruin the whole chapter for you, but uh, yeah, I, I like this one. This one I thought was very useful, especially if Jordan's going to be attending events, you know, charity dinners, if he's expected to talk in front of a crowd and everyone else is going to be at a black tie event, This he'd get a lot of mileage out of this. So, Rule number six, suit number six is to set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. Now, the fabric here may seem a little bit loud, but it's actually a classic pattern right here, that gray with a window pane. This is going to be memorable. At the same time, it could be a workhorse suit because gray is pretty much going to go with any color. It is double breasted though, so it's going to make it a little bit dressier, but still, I think for Jordan and the life he leads, how he's constantly giving presentations, getting up on stage. This would be a suit that he could wear. It would be another workhorse for his rotation. And because we're talking about so many suits here, I'm happy they had a little bit of fun with those peak lapels. They're a little bit wider. Narrow lapels were really common. I'd see them at companies like Suit Supply. Uh, I think that is fine, especially if you are a younger, thinner guy. But if you're a bigger guy or you're an older man, I do think that wider lapels can look great on you. And now let's address that inner lining. Notice how this this is a bunch of former Soviet Union art. So for those of you guys that are just learning about Jordan Peterson, he is not a communist. Actually, why he collected this art after the fall of the Soviet Union is he wanted reminders of how beautiful the message of authoritarianism and the idea that, yes, these people that put together this art, they had this ideal. But in going for this ideal, they crushed freedom. They literally killed the people they were trying to help. And this fits really well with the name of the suit, the name of the chapter. If you haven't read the book, again, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but there are tons of videos because you've got all these, let's just use it, social justice warriors that want to go out there and change the world. They want to enact these laws, yet this person's personal life is a complete mess. This person doesn't really have any experience changing the environment the way that laws would have unintended consequences. All they see is their one goal and the thing that they want to change and they don't realize that history has told us. Actually, history has shown us that when we're going after a utopia, we often create a hell on earth. Overall, a solid suit, maybe a bit flashy with the window pane, but uh, if it's his style, I think he's going to get a lot of wear out of this. Suit number seven, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Now, they're calling this suit a tuxedo, which is the American term for black tie. I do think that they're using a fancy fabric here. They call it imperial jade. I'm not familiar with it, but it looks nice. I do think with the stripes, it's a little bit more fashion forward. But again, I think Jordan's going to have tons of events that he can wear this too. So, it makes sense to have all of these formal suits in his wardrobe because it just fits his particular needs. Now, the image diagram that I saw had notched lapels. They did say that they're going to make it with peak lapels. So, that is good because a formal jacket like that does again either need shawl 
or peak lapels. So overall, it looks good to go. Very simple, and I like it. My only issue is that they didn't seem to include a cummerbund or any type of waist covering, which is required for black tie, but no one will probably notice, and uh, yeah. Now, the lining on this jacket is absolutely beautiful. If you know your biblical text, this is going to be the Garden of Eden. Now, it's no secret that Jordan Peterson is a Christian, and he takes a lot of the beliefs, he actually breaks it down and gives interpretations of the Bible that I actually hadn't heard before growing up Catholic. It's something that uh, I've heard the Bible multiple times, but I really like a lot of his explanations. I wasn't exactly sure what story that he wanted to talk about in the creation story that this lining was actually referring to. So, if anyone's got a video or they know exactly which part he's referring to, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. Next up, we've got suit number eight. Tell the truth or at least don't lie. So, I have to admit, this is one of my favorite suits in the collection. I love a true blue suit. Blue suits in general, navy, we see them everywhere, but true blue requires a little bit more confidence. You are going to stand out. It grabs it. It really works for younger men. It gives them a lot of power. It shows their confidence. And for an older guy, it can breathe life into your overall outfit and look. Now, it is a three-piece suit, so it's got the vest. And on the back of the vest, does anyone know actually what the embers, what the burning wood stands for? Uh, you can let us know down in the comments below. But when we look at the other details of the suit, I love how they went with white buttons. I use Mother of Pearl buttons in some of my jackets. It really is a way to take a simple navy jacket and add a bit of contrast to it here. Uh, they've also got the red on the buttonholes. So, they're having a lot of fun. And because of that, it is a bit more casual, but let's go over to the lining. So, you may look at this lining, and again, unless you've read the book, you've watched his videos, you won't have any idea what this thing is about. But the guy right there is his old neighbor when he was 25 years old. The guy's like 45, 20 years ahead of him. He was a former Hell's Angel, and he would get really drunk and scary. And Jordan's wife, you know, this guy would come knocking in at three o'clock in the morning and say, hey, you know, you'd be really drunk and you're like, you want to buy a toaster? Do you want to buy a microwave? And of course, Jordan didn't know how to respond to this guy. He kind of knew him and they didn't, they had a little bit of a language issue. The guy was very much, I think, a Quebec native. So, he spoke with that French, English, yeah, more French than probably than English. And Jordan would just buy the stuff and he got to know the guy. He liked the guy, but he realized, I mean, this was a pretty rough dude. Now, I don't want to ruin the story for you. So, go off and read the book yourself, do your research. But I will tell you that eventually, Jordan was able to tell the truth to him. Not exactly maybe what the guy wanted to hear, but he accepted it. And I think it's really important because so many times in life, it's expedient for us to lie, right? We're going to get more. I mean, smart kids learn to lie at an early age because they're going to get more. But uh, lying, where's that going to put you in life? Yeah, you, you probably know. Suit number nine. Assume the person you're listening to may know something that you don't. Now, apparently in the fabric, it actually has real platinum and that's supposed to symbolize truth and love. The jacket has wide peak lapels, and besides that is really a nondescript jacket that just simply is a workhorse. Now, personally, do I like black suits? If you've watched some of my videos, you know the answer is no. I think they belong in the black tie realm, but I can see Jordan pulling this off, especially as his hair grays. He's got the whole salt and pepper look, and I love the fact, again, they pay attention to the fabric and the meaning of the materials in it. Now, the lining of this jacket is interesting because it has a lot of the podcasts and shows that Jordan has been on, and I like like how they don't just have the right wing side. They've also got the left wing. They got people with all different viewpoints right here in the lining. And it just goes to show that Jordan has tried to be on shows in which the people are hostile to him. The people are very friendly, but he's always going into this with an open mind. The only issue I've got with this lining is why did they put Jordan Peterson on it? I mean, we already know that this is his suit. I think they could have probably put on another podcaster or maybe a person that did a very contentious interview. It would have been nice. Yeah, the, I know he interviewed with a couple women that did not like him or seem not to. And that's where we got that gotcha moment that so many of us like to replay again and again. Ha, gotcha. You have got me. You have got me. The next suit we have is to be precise in your speech. Again, we've got a classic fabric right here. We have a navy chalk stripe fabric. And the difference between chalk stripe and pinstripe, chalk stripe is going to be a little bit wider. It's going to be technically a little bit less formal. Although this jacket seems to be made with peak lapels, so that kind of goes against that. But in general, 
Jordan's the kind of guy that's wearing a suit almost every day, or so it seems. So that's where I think that for him, he's going to find a way to wear almost all of the suits I'm talking about in today's video. And when I look at the overall cut, I look at the design, everything is in place here. I really like, again, they pay attention to the details and notice that they went again with a double breast and we got the four buttons right there. This is a classic design and works for his build. Now, the lining on this one is really fun. It's from the book. There's no such thing as a dragon. And if you've got kids or if you're a kid at heart, highly recommend you grab this book because it has, I mean, it could be something that you read to a kid, but it has a deeper meaning for adults. I'm not going to ruin it for you, but I will say that so many relationships are ruined because of the inability to communicate. And that's what this book so beautifully illustrates. Next up, we've got suit number 11. Do not bother children when they are skateboarding. Now, I'll be straight up here. The fabric choice they've got here is probably my least favorite, even though I do like a dark olive green. They went with this dark green corduroy, which is Sounds great for variety, but practicality speaking, I'm just not sure. But if anyone can pull it off, I'm sure Jordan can, even if he's just wearing that suit, I don't know, to, you know, a book signing or some other event that's really low key. And the lining goes with a bright contrasting yellow with a black silhouette of boys skateboarding. Now that I'm thinking about it, the whole point of that chapter is to let kids do dangerous things so that they can understand boundaries. Maybe the company actually, they gave him this green corduroy suit because they're like, okay, it's going to be a little bit dangerous, but uh, yeah. Now, the next suit we want to talk about is pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. Now, the color of this suit seems relatively simple. We've got that dark blue, but look at the style. We've got a safari style jacket. This is a classic style. Not many men are rocking it nowadays, and I don't know if Jordan's going to get a whole lot of wear out of this suit. The style is distinctive because of the double breast pockets and the belt that goes around. I can tell you that I've got one safari jacket in my collection and I actually, whenever I wear it, I wear it without the belt. Another thing to note with the safari jacket is the buttons are all going to have flaps and they're usually going to have a fastener, which again is going to make this jacket very casual. All that being said, I love the fact that this jacket is made from a unique fabric, seersucker. So seersucker is a cotton fabric that actually comes out of the Southern United States. And what's interesting about it is it's got this three-dimensional weft weave that allows the air to flow closer to the skin and for you to be able to wear it in hot weather without yeah, dying. Now, the lining has a whole bunch of cats in it. Three guys, I actually don't know who these three guys are. And I also watched the Trailer Park Boys. I'm very embarrassed to state to say that, but I, I've also quite addicted to the Trailer Park Boys and that's... But I do know when Jordan talked about cats and why he used cats instead of dogs, because I'm a dog guy, he talked about how, you know, dogs are pretty much domesticated. They will be really friendly. Cats, they're kind of, you know, these, they're semi-domesticated. Sometimes even your, I mean, our cats, sometimes they don't want to be pet. I'm like, I feed you guys twice a day. My cats still treat me like I'm a second-class citizen. So then why do you want to pet them? Well, I'm not going to ruin the book for you, but he does talk about bringing order to chaos, putting yourself out there, being friendly, feeling a little bit more human, connecting with other beings. Overall, I like how they had fun with this jacket, but in my opinion, it's probably going to be one of the least worn in this collection. Now, at this point, some of you guys may be asking, Antonio, why should I even consider wearing a suit? Well, guys, if you're into Jordan Peterson and you want to hear my reaction to why he says every man should be wearing a suit, I got you covered right here with this video. Solid video. And uh, I agree. He's this interview with uh, Patrick Bet David, who uh, I did. I got, I knew Patrick years ago. If you actually go to his channel, Valuetainment, you go to the, you'll find me in some of the older videos on his channel. A little bit of a nugget there, but check out this video right here. Boom. Oh yeah.